A lot of news to get into here today, not the least of which was this afternoon the graphic appeared on social media. MJF speaks tonight. And he sure did. Yep. Came out and did a uh, pipe bomb promo, which uh, ended up working out exactly like the original pipe bomb promo and that he left as a total baby face. Fans chanting his name during the commercial breaks and uh, aired his alleged grievances on uh, national television. And uh, what did you think of all of this, Dave? His delivery was tremendous. Um, it got people talking, so that's a good thing. Um, the negative is if you um, create a situation, which WCW did, which at first, and at first worked out, you know, they had a couple, they had a couple of years of really good business from it. But if you create a situation where your company is something to make fun of, um, it's not good for your company in the long run. And, you know, if, if, if uh, you know, he was basically using the, the Jim Cornette material, you know, um, and if, the AEW fan base is starting to recite the Jim Cornette material. Um, it kind of makes AEW into a minor league promotion in their eyes, you know, with the 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 Mark owner and the the wrestlers who are all bad wrestlers, no matter how good their matches are. They really they don't they really don't know how to wrestle, and they don't know how to draw money. And I'm you know, there's only one way to draw money, which is the Forty years ago, or fifty years ago, way to draw money, and you know, so you can erase all the success. Um, and it's it's a dangerous thing. I saw it with WCW when they ran off that. You know, they in the long run, um, in the long run, it's not a good deal. Now, if it's a couple months, you know, it could be different. It'll probably work. MJF could come out to be a star. May, um, you know, one of the things that they need to do is uh find something to jack up the ratings and perhaps this is it you know because you really want those ratings big in the fall and winter when they have to negotiate the new deal i mean that's the key is to peak business at that point we're a little early for the peak um on the flip side we got uh you know the warner uh the warner uh media discovery people a lot of them were at the show and i mean they had they had a big party last night after the show and everybody seemed happy but I wonder how many of them, I mean, like, you know, just as an example, like TSN in Canada, some of those swear words got through on live television, and they're not going to be happy with that. Um, you know, um, so, you know, you, uh, and, and again, there's going to be different people with different viewpoints. But I mean, his delivery was phenomenal. It was a really great segment. It was a really compelling segment. Um, it was, it was really funny. I mean, because, you know, the, the, Everything that happened with Wardlow and MJF at the pay-per-view ended up being essentially erased. You know, I mean, Wardlow was a nothing. MJF was the big star. MJF was never injured, even though he did, took 10 power bombs. He came out not selling a thing. You know, he made a quick reference. I'm a little sore, but essentially not selling a thing. Um, they could have waited to do it, but, you know, it felt like that they felt that we got to strike when the iron's hot and uh, get them on TV as quick as we can because it's been, uh, you know, the co the competition's been pretty tough and maybe they just want to jumpstart this whole thing. So, um, but at the same time, by doing that, you know, you we just saw this guy go out on a stretcher and the crowd going crazy for Wardlow. And now we'll, it's, it's, I mean, you've seen it before where, like I said, when Wardlow got over really big, I go, they better have something lined up for him after and there was no sign that they did. It was like, okay, now he's there, and now he's just going to squash people. Um, we're past that point. This isn't like year one Bill Goldberg. This is year three Bill Goldberg, and you can't just go out there and squash people and, and have him not lose momentum. So, um, yeah, I, um, I, I thought uh, there's a lot of things like that, uh, about the show that uh, I had a lot of problems with not the wrestling at all i mean one of the things was is they had i mean this was legitimately the biggest crowd for a television show uh a wrestling television show this year um i mean there were pay-per-views wb's had pay-per-views wrestlemania and royal rumble that had bigger crowds but 
for a television show. It's the biggest crowd. And it just looked like any other arena. I mean, they didn't do any wide shots. We didn't get, you know, anything. You know, it it, it, it could have been an arena with 5,000 people or 3,000 people, for that matter, the way it was shot. So the benefit of having that huge crowd, it's like, um, I, it, you know, you don't get crowds. You don't get crowds over fifteen thousand for a television show every week. You may get, um, AEW may get one or two a year, and it was just like it felt like watching it. I never got the, I never got the feeling. I mean, they said the the attendance. I never got the feeling it was anything different from any other show, um, other than the Max promo. You know, I mean, it was just matches and and some good ones. Um, you know the. The ten man tag was good. They announced uh, Punk and Tanahashi, which was interesting. Um, which was really about the only thing they did, other than they kind of teased that maybe FTR against Cobb and Ocon would might be on that uh, that uh, show, but didn't really. You know, they got a pay per view in four weeks, and it was almost like sometimes with WWE when you have that uh, that first show after the thing. Uh, they don't even bother with the next pay per view, and I guess you don't really have to because we've proven that you know you you. You, a lot of the, the the draw is in the last week, but uh, this one you've got a whole crew of people who, aside from the hardcores, you know who the New Japan guys are, you got a whole crew of people that a lot of your audience doesn't know. And aside from Jim Ross and, 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 and you know, Excalibur and Tony Schiavone to a degree, you know, putting over Tanahashi uh, and him coming out, I mean, we really didn't get anything. You know, we got to figure out, we got to teach these people who... Whoever the guys are, because there's like probably, you know, much of that roster, you know, from from Bullet Club and, you know, uh, the uh, the Empire and Suzuki Gun and all them, you know, they're all probably going to be represented. And uh, you can't that you can't do. I don't think you can get 20 people over in a week or two of television. So um, I thought that they needed to. If it, you know, even if it's just a video package or something, because the guys, you know, of course they have a big show in Japan on uh, Friday, so a lot of the people couldn't be there. But you can always do video packages. So um, that was uh, some of my thoughts on the show. Uh, I thought that the, like I said, the ten man tag was good. Seems like they're setting up Young Bucks against Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy, uh, which should be a great match. They are doing Young Bucks against Pentagon and Phoenix on Friday, which. I mean that's one of the greatest tag team feuds of all time, and uh, you know it's going to be in in um, Ontario, which is Young Bucks' home. Uh, so the crowd's going to be sold out. The crowd's going to be on fire. Uh, so that's that should be a match. You know, I mean that should be an absolutely incredible match. So they got some stuff coming up. Uh, we got uh, Blood and Guts coming to Detroit. So uh, that big crowd will be first time in the market. It's going to get something special. Um, Jericho and and uh, Ortiz are doing a hair match in St. Louis in two weeks, so they 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 got a lot of stuff going on. We got Athena debuting. We had Miro back. We had uh, Johnny Elite basically being a, a squash guy, which is uh, a surprise a little bit. Um, but a lot of stuff going on on the show. But uh, I yes, wasn't. We'll uh, we'll get into the uh, full report here in a little while. But let's get some of the news in, and then we'll uh, break it down segment by well, segment. Well, so so so. On the, on the punk thing. Um, so he did the, the interview, and the crowd turned with him the more he mocked Tony Khan. The MGF and, interview. Yeah, the, the, the MGF interview, you're right. And um, the more he mocked everyone, um, the crowd turned with him. He was doing, you know, very similar to actually a lot of what Dan Lambert did, but um, just incredible delivery. And um, they cut the mic off, like, uh, you know, as as part of the gimmick. And then... Uh, during the commercial break, they did not show this on TV. Punk comes out and chases him to the, you know, chases him and he runs away. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't put that on television. They certainly wanted it out. Um, so it was just interesting that they did that during the break. So, um, maybe this plan is Punk and MJF for, for all out. And, uh, you know, but that, that could be, uh, that that could be the direction. Good chance it's the direction. MGF came out for his promo, and uh, he clearly was trying to do a heel promo because he was regularly insulting the fans. But uh, the issue is that 
if you are doing what is supposed to be a heel promo and you start bringing up grievances that the fans actually have, then you risk turning yourself babyface, which he did, and turning the company heel, which they have not done yet, but he certainly turned himself babyface here. And uh, uh, he, he he turned the company heel. You know, they were cheering against Tony Khan. They were when he started bringing up, you know, it used to be all friends wrestling, which is, you know, I mean, that's just right out of the Jim Cornette playbook, you know, um, you know, and uh, untrained guys. And I don't drop people on my he- on their head. And I, I don't know, like I, it you know, again, he did. He was great. The storyline will probably get over at first. Um, but. Man, I you know you don't want to damage your company, and I've seen this in in WCW, and it damaged the company really bad in the long run. I mean, they went out of business. Um, there was no dude. We've seen know. this in WCW. We saw it in WWE when Punk did that promo. That's supposed to be a heel promo. The pipe bomb was supposed to be a heel promo, and he got over as a huge babyface, and people turned against the company. And for years afterwards, the company was the heel. Actually, they've been a heel for probably decades because they always had the, but the authority figure. The difference is, is that they always did the heel authority figure and, and all that. But AEW, I mean, I suppose they could do that. But, I mean, is, is Tony Khan going to become a television character? Well, that's a big question because, listen, what's the end game here? To get the guy over as a heel? Well, he's already over as a heel. Is it to well the what? end game the, the end the the end game is to increase ratings and to make well that's all fine and good but and what's make the story MJ, and, and make MJF into a star oh, well he's not, a star but like what's well, bigger, what's the re, end game a, here a real star a feud a move, with Tony Khan a mover it better not be well I mean he he said he wanted Tony to fire him they cut his mic like maybe they got some grandiose plan but like I can't figure out what's the end game here. I don't I mean, think it's MGF going babyface. The well, that's I, I'm sure that's not the plan. It's hard to do Austin McMahon without a McMahon. Well, you want? Um, I mean, I think they I don't think have any authority figure. They might. They might go with MJF and Punk just for a pay per view main event. Um, well, certainly down the road, that's that's where this is all going. But um, but I mean, the thing is, is is look, they're they're looking to jumpstart ratings. Um, they're looking to be more valuable. I mean, they can, they're kind of, you know, a lot of this was uh, the CM Punk Ring of Honor stuff when he was leaving and how they did that and they kind of romanticized that. And then, I mean, it, you know, the original Summer of Punk and, you know, it, it's, it's, there's some similarities there. There's obviously, obviously a lot, a lot, a lot of Brian Pillman with the swearing and everything like that and just being completely out of control. And, um, you know, Brian Pillman was supposed to be, Brian Pillman wanted to be a heel. He was supposed to be a heel, and he ended up being a babyface, doing the same thing. So, um, and, you know, everyone romanticizes the Brian Pillman thing, and I was in the middle of it. And I mean, you know, and I talked to him constantly during it. But the one thing about it was um, it 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 never really moved ratings. And it, it, it was very good for Brian, and everyone talked about Brian. Um, it's just like everyone's going to talk about MJF, but it wasn't like, you know, the, you know, it was a big, you know, a big boom in the ratings. It's not like, um, you know, WCW gained anything from it. And when WWE, when he came into WWE, WCW gained nothing from it. They lost Brian Pillman. Yeah. Cause he was playing the game against them. And I don't know what game Max is playing. I mean, um, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. I don't know if he signed an extension. I mean, it will look, put it this way. If, if he leaves in 2024 um, and he gets over really big between now and 2024, that's going to do them a lot of harm. That will hurt them a lot. Um, you know, um, so I, I, I hope if they're going in this direction, that they got a, a longer agreement out of him. Um because he is going to be, you know, again, there are, there, you know, Punk's the biggest star in the company. And he's also, you know, almost mid-40s. Um, so he's not the future of the company. I mean, he's he's the present of the company. Um, the future of the company is Max, if he stays. Adam Page. Um, you know, people like that. That's the, you know, you know Jungle Boy, maybe. Um, Jungle Boy... Jungle Boy will always be someone who is pushed to a certain degree 
and Darby until his body gives out on him will will always be a star um you know but um you know I mean Max could be the guy in the company for for a long long time if he's there for a long long time if he is going to leave uh putting him over super huge and making him the face of the company and then having him leave um you know that that's not a good thing either um i know we got an, a year and a half before we got to worry about it, and that's in wrestling it's an eternity and and one of the key things is the contract for warner brothers and discovery i mean that's going to be negotiated probably the end of this year so that's why i say like end of this year maybe beginning of 2023 um so that's why i say it's very very important to get um to peak this company um and get a mainstream character or a character everyone's talking about and you know in theory you know make this guy something where everyone's talking about him i mean that is a good thing um and he can be a heel or he can be a face and a, a great heel ends up being a face now because just the nature of the fan base and everything if you're super entertaining they're going to cheer you but man i mean mjf went from i mean he was booed out of the building at the pay-per-view and people wanted him gone, and then he comes in, and man, you know he. Well, he the stole- two the two big lines were the line about how, uh, you know, I'm the top minute by minute draw in AEW. Actually, and, he said he was the second biggest. And he, he he used to say he was the top, but I guess somebody must have told him. I presume Punk is actually the biggest, so he said I'm the second biggest. Well, he said Tony Khan won't open his pocketbook to the guy who's been here since day one. And, of course, this audience is very loyal to the folks that have been in AEW since day one. And then he makes the comment about how, you know, you can't open up the pocketbook because you're too busy paying ex-WWE guys. And as soon as he said that, huge babyface pop. Well, they should know that because... because, the fans have been complaining that there's too many ex-WWE people being signed. I mean, we already know that. We saw the same thing. Chris Statlander said the same thing and got the same reaction. Yep, yep. You know, and, and so he and, said, and, uh, uh, you know, ruined Ruby Soho semifinal win. He said, if I were an ex WWE guy, would you pay me more? And that, of course, got a pop. Well, of course, and they so would. Uh, he's he's trying to turn these fans against him again. But I mean, those he two lines, in, he was a huge baby face. He was insulting them, but you know, he was, um, you know, again, like you know, he was making it cool to, um, you know, that it was it was very much it very much reminded me of watching uh, Nash and Hall. You know, with with making all the WCW baby faces kind of you know uncool and impotent, and that was never a good thing. You know, um, but we'll see how it plays out. I mean, it, you know, again, you can tweak it. Um, hopefully, Tony and Max are both smart enough not to repeat the mistakes of WCW. But I watched this, and um, you know, I did think it was more Pillman, um, but Pillman didn't. Uh, did, I don't remember Pillman running down um and he ran down some people but i don't remember him um and of course you know he ran down you know the booker and all that but that was part of his storyline um and he there were you know they were going those places um i don't know i don't know i mean uh i mean look everyone's ta- everyone's gonna talk about him and uh you know we'll see you know, time will tell. You know, if it if it moves the metrics, um, it's a success as long as it's it doesn't hurt in the long run, which is the thing. Again, when I saw the negative reaction to the company, um, especially from a big crowd like that, when you start telling people that uh, the company's run by a fool, a mark in the stands, and just gives away money to ex WWE guys, that's like you know, people may get behind that and everything. And some people will, and I think some people do resent the changes in the company. But in if you make the company itself out to be incompetent when they're in a war, um, in the long run, that is not a good thing. You know, you know, it's like the the incompetent guy with a lot of money uh, going against Vince McMahon. Uh, you don't want that perception at all. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work. 
working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.